What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm on Toxin Gaming today, people. Today, I'm actually bringing you my top five decks for the November 2021 format. This is a format with the new skill erratas, the first skill erratas that hit the Cocoon of Ultra Evolutions, the Inner Conflict, and the Twisted Personality. And so that's going to reshape our entire format since three of our top four decks got hit. Uh, so this is going to be my, what the five decks I think are going to be like number one in our current format. Um, so, uh, without further ado, let's just jump into it. No point in batting around the bush or anything. As you can see, number five on our list is going to be Magnet Warriors. Um, I was really hyped after seeing the list about this deck actually being competitively viable. Uh, this deck is very cool, very strong to play. Um, it's pretty much based around this card here, Magnetic Field, which is a uh, field spell card for the deck that just says if you control level 4 or lower Earth Rock Monster, you can target level 4 or lower Magnet Warrior Monster in your graveyard and special summon it. And that's really cool because it's like a monster reborn esque effect that's going to be able to keep swarming your field with these like little vanilla boys like the alphas and the betas and the gammas. And it's just like really nice to have that little swarm because of its second effect that it has here that says once per turn at the end of the damage step when an earth rock monster control battled an opponent's monster but the opponent monster was not destroyed by battle you can return that opponent's monster to the hand now if you know me personally you know i'm a huge fan of hyper hammerhead and this card here literally turns once per turn one of your magnet warriors into hyper hammerhead and i think that's so sick this card is so strong. Um, this is kind of like my list for it right now. I haven't done any testing for it. Uh, so you guys can use this list if you want and test for yourself and then deck build off of it. Um, but I haven't tested it personally, so I can't tell you this is the best way to run this deck. But uh, I'm going to tell you what we're playing here. We're playing Deltas. Uh, Delta is a card that says when it's normal summon, you foolish magnet warrior to the graveyard. And then uh, whenever he's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can send... Uh, you can banish three level four lower Magnet Warrior monsters from your graveyard, except Delta and Special Summon Valkyrion from your hand or deck. So, this is Valkyrion. He's a 3500 beat stick with 3850 defense points. He's very powerful. Um, the other thing I wanted to go over was the uh, skill. Now, I don't have the skill brought up on the screen here. I definitely should have added it. But, uh, what the skill does, it says you can reveal, uh, I think it's two Magnet Warriors from your hand with different names. And then what that does is it allows you to add Valkyrie on the Magnet Warrior from your deck to your hand. It also has the ability that says um, when you normal summon a uh, Magnet Warrior, you get to add a Magnet Warrior from your deck to your hand. So summoning Delta and then using its effect to pitch one of these guys and then using the effect of your skill because this was normal summon to add another one to your hand is very powerful. Um, so yeah, uh, Bottomless Trap, or Floodgate Trap Hole is uh, now a 3 of, I feel like, in most decks and speed duels because of the way they just uh, made the ruling for um, skill monsters. When a monster is summoned by a skill, we actually are able to activate our Floodgate Trap Holes and our Book of Moons to the response of the summoning of the monster, which I think needed to happen. I thought it was always very unfair that uh, you just couldn't activate um, Floodgate to Moss from being summoned from Cocoon. I was like, man... This deck is already too good. Um, but yeah, uh, side deck cards that are going to be interesting. Texas format is going to be like Kaikus, Jar of Avarice for the stall decks, or, or DD Crow for the um, zombie decks. Yeah, but this is pretty much my list for it. Uh, moving on to number four on our list, it's actually going to be uh, Viral Despair. If you guys don't know what this guy, this deck does, it's actually a stall mill deck. It's meant to mill out your opponent's deck. Um, so this deck here I, was sent to me a while ago by my friend Lucas, uh, Lucas Gaylord on Dis Discord, if you know him, it's actually a really cool deck, uh, and I think you guys, if you're trying to, like, learn to format right now, I feel like this deck is probably a good deck for you to learn. Um, so the skill you're using is a skill called Viral Infection, what that skill says is you can send any amount of cards from your hand to the graveyard and then call a card Monster Spell or Trap. Your opponent sends that many cards from their deck to the graveyard of the card call of the called card. So, for example, say you send Nudoria to the graveyard from your hand, and you call Trap. They have to send one Trap card from their deck to the graveyard. But 
If you send two Knight Assailant from your hand to the graveyard and call Monster, your opponent has to send two monsters from their deck to the graveyard. Not only that, but Knight Assailant has this neat little text that says when this card is sent from the hand to the graveyard, target one flip effect monster in your graveyard, accept this card, or return that target to hand. Now, that means that if you send two Knight Assailants, they both can target each other and return themselves to hand, being able to be discarded for two on your next turn, making it into the perfect card for this mill out deck. Um, the other cards we're playing in this deck is Despair from the Dark. Now, this is your big boss monster of the deck. All right, this is a 3,000 defender, 2,800 attack points. This guy is just as strong as an XYZ Dragon Cannon, which is going to be very powerful in this format. Um, not only that, but you can reoccur it from your graveyard with Haunted Shrine, which is arguably the best zombie trap slash spell card in the format right now. This card just says when you control no monsters, target a zombie monster in your graveyard and special summon it. And then if you control no monsters again, you can banish this card from your graveyard, target a zombie monster in your graveyard, and special summon, but its effects are negated. Now you can only use one Haunted Shrine effect per turn, and only once that turn, and which is a downside, but it's still really cool to see that Haunted Shrine can get out our powerful Despair from the Dark, which we can sit on in defense mode if we need to, or switch it to attack mode and be very aggressive with it. Moving on to some other cards, is Zombina. Zombina is a very powerful zombie monster in the current format that just says when it's destroyed by bat or when it leaves destroyed by an opponent's card <laughs> uh, you just get to special summon a level 4 lower monster in your graveyard it doesn't have to be a zombie so that's why we're playing the new Dorias that way we can special summon back the new Doria and then um, our opponent has to attack into the Nidoria, which we are able to destroy that monster that, or destroy a card on the field after it's destroyed by battle. So this is a very powerful, like, stall tech. And then we're also playing Golden Ladybugs in this deck. That way we can keep gaining life points back. Uh, lastly, it's like a Lore of Darkness. So that way you can draw two. Foolish Barrels to send cards to the graveyard. All that happy stuff. All right. Um, moving on to our next deck. It's going to be... Um, Spellproof Armor. Now, uh, this is a Spellproof Armor deck I was working on a while ago. I haven't really updated it since the format, so in my opinion, do not use this deck. Um, uh, I just wanted to give an example of a deck of what this is. So if you don't know what Spellproof Armor is, it's a skill that says you can normal summon normal machine type monsters with one let or normal, I think it's normal, no, it's just normal machine types, uh, for one less tribute. And so, Ally of Justice Colossalus is a level 6 monster that needs one tribute to summon, but in this deck can be summoned without tributing. Now, it also has this nice little bonus effect to it that says, all machine monsters you control are unaffected by spell cards. Meaning they can't get Book of Moon, they can't get Offerings to the Doom, they can't get Shrunk, they can't get Parasited. Like, this deck is actually very powerful in that regard, mostly paired with the Jinzo monster card. Now this card says trap cards and their effects on the field cannot be activated and they get all trap effects on the field. So that paired with a skill that just says that machine monsters on the field can't be targeted by spell cards shuts down your opponent's spell and trap cards for the deck. Definitely one of the strongest control, I guess is a way to put it, like decks in the game, being able to floodgate out not only spell, your opponent's spell cards, but also your opponent's uh, trap cards as well. This deck is very strong. Um, so what I would recommend is at least playing two Jinzos in your deck. Uh, if you know what Soul Exchange does, it's a spell card that says target one card your opponent controls and use it for a tribute or for a tribute summon. So you tribute off an opponent's monster that's problematic and summon the Jinzo, and then uh, Jinzo will shut off the trap cards too. Um, obviously playing three of your ally of Justice Colossalus and pair that with your three summoners are is a very smart idea. That makes it to where you're playing six of this card. Book of Moons at three is incredible. I would still play Floodgates in this deck as well. Play that card at two. Um, so if you're wondering, like, with this current deck, how I feel about, like, taking cards out, putting cards in, just take out these trap cards here. Um, and then I would put in, uh, two Floodgates and two Soul Exchange. That would be a really good start for this. Uh, maybe take out this Nobleman Across out here and put in another Jinzo. There you go. That's a very smart idea. And then your side deck can be whatever you really want. Just remember to keep the Lost Winds. All right, going on to our next deck. It's actually number four on our list, which is a lot of people will argue should be number one on our list, but I know a deck that I feel like is above this deck. Now, this deck is XYZ uh, Union Combination. 
Union Combination is what makes this deck incredibly powerful and Union Scramble. But we'll get, I'll tell you what Union Combination does. So Union Combination pretty much lets you Miracle Fusion out your uh, XYZ monsters by banishing from your field and or graveyard to special summon these cards, which I think is very powerful. Um, the only downside of the skill becomes that your opponent doesn't take damage the turn you use that skill, which is fine. Um, so this deck is actually really cool. I think you guys are going to like playing this one a lot. Um, and uh, the reason, like, there's a lot of really, really cool cards in this. It's a fusion monster deck. Like, it's a very beginner-friendly deck. It is probably going to be one of our top three decks no matter what. This deck is just so strong. It just, uh, people will don't realize that the deck loses into not only floodgate but one of the best trap cards arguably in the game to side against it is lost wind and so pairing the uh the book of moons the bottom the floodgate trap holes and then the lost winds all together it kind of shuts down xyz and so i think people just don't realize that like after game two the likelihood of you uh your opponent not getting the floodgates the books or the lost winds are next to none so you're going to have to rely less on your fusion summons and more on your uh y equip z 2100 beater that can also get book of moon and floodgated you know um so uh the de card that makes this deck actually incredibly insane is union scramble uh this is a return from a different dimension and uh that so if you don't know what that does uh target up to three of your bash light machine normal monsters and or light machine union monsters and special summon them during either player's turn uh so that's a really good card so the reason why this is good is because uh once you go into say your xyz dragon cannon you can then use your union scramble to go into your other pieces um Pair that with a Union Hanger, summon back your X Head Cannon, your Y Dragon Head, and then all of a sudden you're uh, equipped in the Y Dragon Head with a Z Metal Tank. Um, but yeah, uh, Union Hanger is also very powerful in the aspect of when you activate it, you get to search your deck for a Light Machine Union Monster. So you add your Y Dragon Head, which is a piece you need for your Fusion Monsters, and then you Normal Summon it, allowing you to equip your Z Metal Tank, which is the second part you need for your YZ Tank Dragons. Now we're playing this card at two just because it's so accessible in this deck with the Union Hanger uh, uh, field spell. The other cards to look at is like XYZ Dragon Cannon, which is like our main boss monster. Uh, this is, effect isn't once per turn. Every one of these effects, I, by the way, of your fusion cards aren't once, once per turn. Keep that in mind. Now, that means that you can use the XYZ Dragon Cannon's effect and keep discarding cards from your hand, the target cards on your opponent's field, and destroy them. This card is incredibly powerful. Uh, XZ Tank Cannon, same kind of uh, effect, except it has to be face down spell and trap cards. Uh, YZ Tank Dragon, also discard effect, but it has to be face down monster cards. And then... XY Dragon Cannon is face up spell and trap cards. Um, but yeah, this deck is really cool. Probably going to be one of our top contenders, if not the best deck of the format. Um, and like I said, if you're starting to get into the game, this is the perfect deck for you to pick up and learn. If you have a friend that's trying to get into the game, give them this deck. If you're just trying to be like a competitive player play this deck and even this list right here is like a good list for you to just try out uh lost winds are in it offerings are in the side jars are there for the stall decks like uh viral despair and then dd crows are there for the zombies like this deck is actually a good little foundation for you to start on if you're just uh if you're trying to like get into competitive play or just starting out in the game all right now moving on to number one on our list is actually the dreaded moss <laughs> yeah that's right this this uh game didn't kill it they killed the both the other skills literally both the other skills are unusable now except for the moss skill which was arguably the best deck in the game if you don't know what moss's skill originally was it was you could send one insect monster on the field equipped with a uh equip spell and send it to the graveyard i think it actually tributed it or something and then you special summon one uh insect monster from your deck ignoring its summoning conditions uh, pair that with Parasite Paranoid that summons a uh, level 7 or higher insect monster from your hand, ignoring its summoning conditions uh, once it's sent from the graveyard. While equipped it to a monster, you can uh, then uh, get out two ult perfectly ultimate great moths. Uh, Parasite 
also equips to the card and then, you know, makes it into an insect. You contribute it off the skill. But the new skill says um, you can't uh, normal summon or special summon to turn you to use that skill. So you're only summoning one moss because you can no longer parasite out another moss. So once per duel, you're just going summon ult perfectly ultimate and great moss, which is now susceptible to the floodgate trap holes or even the sided lost winds because it's also his special summon monster. So this deck isn't as like aggressive as what it used to be. That's why we play cards like Kaiku. Now Kaiku shuts down the meta. Um, this card is incredibly powerful. Uh, what it does is that it says uh, your opponent can't, or yeah, your opponent cannot banish cards from either graveyard. What that means is that your opponent can't XYZ summon because to summon their fusion monsters, you have to banish your materials to summon them. So you shut down XYZ with this card. Not only are you shutting down XYZ with this card, but you're also shutting down or slowing down Viral Despair because Haunted Shrines can't activate from the graveyard. They can't banish themselves to summon back the Despair. They can't banish themselves to summon back the Zombinas. So like they're only getting that one-time use instead of that two-time use from the card. Um, so yeah, this is like this deck is called Kai Kun. If you guys don't know that on Speed Duel League, they actually have these uh, showdowns every Monday, which is a five dollar tur online tournament that you can play through Dueling Book. Uh, if you guys are ever interested in playing that, highly recommended. Rook's Table runs the tournament. Uh, he's a really cool YouTuber. He's pretty much my inspiration for Speed Duels. Um, so yeah, check that out, that guy's channel, random plugin, I know. <laughs> um, but he has these showdowns, and this was the top deck. And I really think that this anti-meta Kaikun, is what they're calling it, uh, is going to be the best deck of our format. And the reason why is because we're still running the Apprentice Package. Now, uh, the Apprentice Package is what gets around Spellproof. Uh, so, spell, uh, Apprentice Magician floats into the Old Vindictive Magician, and then uh, the old Vindictive Magicians get to flip themselves up and pop the Jinzos, which allow for the Floodgates to still be able to activate. Um, but yeah, uh, we also play three Breaker the Magical Warrior in this deck. The reason why we're playing Breaker in this deck is it's out the Spell and Trap cards. It's like still going to be one of our, you know, more common staples of the format. Um, but yeah, uh, so the other part of the skill I don't think I mentioned was the fact that you can shuffle back a... Uh, insect monster into the deck and draw a card, which I think is really powerful. The only downside is, is that now with the skill errata for Cocoon of Ultra Evolution, is that you can't use both the skills in the same turn. You can no longer equip and tribute uh, and draw a card that turn. You have to choose one or the other in that turn. And both the skills are also once per duel. So it becomes like really unique on how you play this deck. This is like a stall variant of Moss. And it's a very, very, it's a stall anti meta variant. And um, I still think like this is going to be our best deck of the format. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for the for the video, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you like this kind of content. If you want to keep me or want me to keep making content like this, make sure you leave a like. And if you like me, make sure to subscribe. I want to see like you know, I want to see more of you guys, and I would love to talk to more of you guys. So leave a comment in the comment section down below. But other than for that, everybody, I hope you have a great day. It was fun talking about these cool decks that are coming to the format. And above all else, I want you all to stay awesome. Bye-bye.